a wonder hussy here, just tooling around the Arizona mountains on a sunny winter's day. I was actually trying to go to a hot spring with my friend. We came down here to Arizona to do like a little mini hot spring adventure, go to as many hot springs as we can. And we have been to a couple good ones, but man, I just don't seem to have very good luck in Arizona because well, we're trying to go to this other hot spring that looks amazing. And we're following the directions in the hot spring book and blah, blah, blah. And the freaking road ends at a locked gate with a private property sign. And you can probably see there's a huge active mining operation <laughs> right here. Wow, look at the size of that dump truck. Yeah, we actually had to drive pretty much right through the center of this giant copper mine. I think it's one of the biggest copper mines in the world to get to this hot spring. And now, well, now we're at an impasse. So I think my friend is gonna look at the map and see if there's an alternate approach. And while he does that, <laughs> well, I happen to notice there's this real old creepy looking pioneer cemetery up on the hillside. So I'll just poke around that since I'm here anyway. I mean, this hillside is just covered in all kinds of graves and some of them, especially over on that side, look pretty old. So even if I can't get to the hot spring, which unfortunately my friend just said there's no other route in, so. Wah, wah. Hey, my consolation prize is I get to wander around this creepy historic cemetery. Okay, we gotta be careful because there's a lot of prickly, pokey cactus all around these graves and we don't want to get stabbed by anything like this bad boy. But there is kind of a little trail going through here, so we should be okay. Now, I get the impression that this side of the cemetery, these are newer graves, and then that's the old historic side over there. And what's interesting about the new side is, well, they're very Catholic looking, and I think that's because there's a lot of Hispanic people in this area that work at that mine. Which, speaking of the mine, <laughs> hiking up the hill to the cemetery gives us an even better vantage point into it. Unfortunately, the sun is right behind me, so <laughs> you can't see it as well as you might. But there's some pretty crazy stuff going on in there. Let me zoom in. I mean, look at the size of those friggin' tires on that thing. It's just kind of an interesting juxtaposition, you know, like, well, the town that we drove through to get here was an old historic mining town from back in the old days, and, well, some things never change. They're still mining. It's just, well, back then it was probably German, English, Scottish miners, and now it's a lot of Hispanic people. Let's check out some of their graves. Okay, so like I said, a lot of these look fairly new. I mean, you can see there's Esther Garcia and Margaret Gonzalez. What does this one say? Oh wow, I mean that looks super old. 1844, yeah. Aquí están los restos de la señora Lugardita P. Macias. Nació el día 12 de diciembre de 1844. <laughs> My Spanish isn't that good. Wow, so she was born in 1844, that's pretty old. And then there's one here next to her, what is this? Oh wow, that one's so old it's all rusted away, you can't even read it. Golly. Oh wow, look over here's a priest. The grave of a priest. Father Lucio Luna, born in 1887, died in 1939. Wow. Okay, well, hopefully the good father doesn't make me, mind me climbing on his grave, but unfortunately there's really no trail or path that goes to the cemetery. You just kind of have to bushwhack. And, well, it's either get stabbed by a cactus or step on somebody's grave. I mean, what's going on here? It's like that used to be a crypt or a grave or something, and it's just all crumbled away and this old dead cactus melting away on top of it like what happened where's the bodies man yikes you know where's all the bones okay yikes this is without question the most treacherous cemetery i've ever tried to explore there's these freaking paddle cactus everywhere and they're i'm trying to get to some kind of trail but golly i'm not even sure there is one actually so bear with me i'm wearing friggin yoga pants that's right, boys, yoga pants. So it's kind of hard, uh, well, to avoid getting stabbed. Holy moly, that was really, really tough to pick my way through that prickly pear patch. But I did. It's definitely not as enjoyable as the hot spring soak I was anticipating to be doing right now. But hey, we made it to the top of the cemetery 
And now we have a really good view of the mine. Check this out. And keep in mind, this is just one tiny part of this. Uh, some people told us this morning this is the second biggest copper mine in the world. I don't know if that's true, but it looks like a pretty big operation. It's really surreal to see these guys blazing about doing their business and then, well, then there's this really old, completely collapsed grave right here. I mean, why is the tombstone knocked over? It just seems really disrespectful. This, this is like the worst condition graveyard I've ever seen. All these graves are just falling apart. It's probably because you can't get to them to do any maintenance on them. So there's so many cactus. You know, somebody needs to come in here with a machete, clean this place up. It's pretty sad, actually. I mean, I'm assuming the people buried here have descendants that are still alive and they can't even come or don't care to come visit their ancestors. Hmm. What do I know? Okay, looks like we might be able to at least get down to these graves here although gosh look at that one it's just totally rotted and collapsed in yikers no information left whatsoever it's really sad and then look look at this truck oh my gosh it's like a water tank or something that'd be fun to drive something that big wouldn't it <laughs> i don't mean to laugh when i'm looking at this sad graveyard yeah because look at this uh next to this busted up old grave and there's one that's just totally plain unmarked no sign whatsoever Really sad. Okay, and then on my other side, well, this one has a cross, and it looks like at one time it had a name on it, but long gone, man. Just invaded by prickly pears. Wow, man. Ashes to ashes indeed. Okay, well, gosh, I'm way up here, and my rig is way down there, and I gotta pick my way through <laughs> all this cactus to get back to it. I'm not sure what the best approach is gonna be. I guess this is why the cowboys wore chaps and not yoga pants. <laughs> Although that would be funny if there was this one cowboy who always wore yoga pants and he had exceptionally firm, succulent, gluteal muscles. I guess that's kind of like what they say about Luke Bryan, the country singer. He always wears really tight jeans. He's known for his tight jeans and he does have a very, well, he does have a very shapely derriere, if I do say so myself. But I think he gets a lot of flack for that from uh, country guys. But the girls sure love it. Yikes, easy. You know, now that I think about it, I actually saw a Luke Bryant show once. I went to, uh, it was Charlie Daniels 80th birthday party at the arena in Nashville. So they had a bunch of different country people that came and did sets. Like it was like a, what do you call that when there's a bunch of different bands that play? And it was a, it was a fundraiser for a veterans organization. So it was for a good cause. But Luke Bryan was one of the performers. And when he came on, it was one of the wildest things I've ever seen. Of course, he came on in his tight jeans, shaking that thing, you know, looking all cute. And this big old bearded hillbilly came down from the stands with a sign that he had made that said, I can see your camel toe. <laughs> I think it was meant to be a disparaging comment uh, reflecting on Luke Bryan's tight jeans. So I guess security came and made that guy go away, but I think Luke Bryan saw it and kind of put him in a bad mood because guess what else happened? <laughs> oh wait, gotta pay attention. Don't want to lose my way and get stuck in a cactus patch. Anyway, I guess seeing that sign kind of put Luke Bryan on edge because, uh, well, I was with my, a friend of mine who's a really big country fan who lives in Nashville. And so he had gotten like, we had second row seats. We we're real close to the stage. Well, there was a man in the front row who he was with his wife. He looked like a classy, you know, well-dressed guy, but I'm not sure what he did. He said something to Luke Bryan, or I think he might have flipped him off. Next thing you know, Luke Bryan jumped off the stage and punched the guy in the face. I couldn't believe I... It was hard for me to believe. My friend and I, I'll be honest, my friend and I were on magic mushrooms. So we were like, are we really seeing reality? What is going on here? Because when's the last time you went to a concert and the singer jumped off the stage and punched one of the audience members in the face? You know what I mean? It was, it was weird, but guess what? It was on TMZ the next day. They had footage of it. It, it really happened. And the best part is in the back of the footage on TMZ, you could see me and my friend. <laughs> Whoa, zoned out of our minds like what is going on it was a weird situation anyway back to the cemetery okay well I think I'm almost at the end of this trail I should be able to very carefully go between these guys don't touch well the mesquite's thorny but that's way worse so I'll take the mesquite side yikes yikes oh we're almost back we're so close dodge this bad boy the good news is my friend did some recon and found another hot spring in the area that we're going to go to instead. So 
I understand copper is very valuable right now. We use it in a lot of our stuff. In fact, I'm sure there's a ton of copper in this very cell phone that I'm using to shoot this video. So I can't really be too salty about this mine. Closing off the road, I guess. I'm still pretty salty though, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> anyway, my saltiness was somewhat tempered by my friend's announcement that there is a different hot spring we can go check out. So I'm gonna get back in my rig and follow him to the next adventure. Okay, well, welcome to part two of the video. We drove through the little historic mining town of Clifton, Arizona, uh, and we're along the San Francisco River in this absolutely beautiful river canyon. But wouldn't you know it, the hot springs appear to be on private property. Urgh, Arizona! Seems like every time I come to Arizona and try to shoot videos, I get, well, I get blocked <laughs> by private property signs. So basically we just drove up this dirt road out of town following the river. We parked here at the side of the river where my friend has the hot spring marked, pinned on his map. And he thinks it's right down here where that beach is. But there's a, a hot spring resort there. I guess it's kind of like an old historic hot spring resort uh, that used to have tubs, but there was some flood that washed them out. So I don't even know if there's hot springs there anymore. And I'm not sure if this river beach is part of their property or not, but my understanding is if a hot spring is on a navigable waterway, in other words, I guess a river or a creek that's deep enough to navigate, which this is if you had a kayak, right? <laughs> then I think uh, you're allowed to uh, publicly trespass for lack of a better word. And there's no signs here. Like we're just gonna hike down from the side of the road. There's no signs or fences or anything. So as far as I know, I ain't breaking any law. So don't shoot me, Mr. Arizona. I just wanted to get a soak. So we just parked there at the side of the road and we're hiking down this trail, the hillside, trying to get to that beach. Okay, well, so far the trail's not too crazy and it seems like there kind of is a, well, sort of a footpath. So I guess people do this legitimately. Yikes. <laughs> and to be honest, this is one of those kind of hot springs that's on a river, right? So you have to dig your own pool. Like you have to find a hot seep on the riverbank and then dig out a hole and build it up with rocks and stuff around it to keep the hot water in and the river water out. And those are great hot springs. We just went to one yesterday that wasn't too far from here. And we spent all day digging these hot springs <sighs> to a varying degree of success. <laughs> and it was absolutely exhausting, man. So I'm not quite sure I'm really up to the challenge of digging a whole hot spring pool today. Uh, especially not knowing how good the sources are and all that. I did bring a little mini shovel with me, just in case I might at least dig something big enough to put my toes into since I did come all the way out here. I don't want this trip to be a total bust. Oh wow, look, there is like <laughs> little ruins of a little tub. It looks like somebody built at some point in the who knows when past. I go down to the river and put my finger in it and see if it's warm. I forgot to bring my thermometer, it's up in my car. Just a beautiful river. I think it's called the San Francisco River. Let's see. Oh, it's ice cold. Woo wee. I don't know where or how you would even tell where a hot seep was. You're supposed to look for steam. Maybe that's what my friend is doing in the distance. But I don't know. I would think if this pool was built right here, well, they would have built it here because there was some kind of a hot seep here, wouldn't they? Let me put my hand down here. Oh yeah, it's hot here, or warm. Uh, oh, there's a seep coming out right here, I can feel it. Oh wow, far out. The seep is so high up here, you'd have to dig right here. Let me get my shovel. I just brought my little folding spade. Uh, where was I? Here, any of it. This is all hot right here. All you have to do is dig it out. I mean, yeah, that is not a very pleasant looking soak, but wooey, that is hot water. So if you did bring a shovel down, you could dig yourself a nice pool and soak all day. Matter of fact, that's actually a better source than the one I had yesterday at the hot spring pool I built. I feel like you could maybe even build a better pool here. Man, it's just a shame this one here is fallen into disrepair. I guess it's just too high up. It got, well, I don't know how it would have gotten washed away. There's no pipe or anything down here. Let me back up. I mean, you can maybe see there where I dug my little 
hot spring hole. It's just right below where that thing is. So maybe at one time the river was higher and gosh, I don't know how you would get that hot seep way up there. Interesting. Okay, well, my friend has hiked way down the beach here. So I'm gonna see what he's up to. Oh, look, there's even like a campfire ruin here. I don't know what the deal is with this beach, if it's part of their property or, man, cause it'd be an awesome place to camp, you know? This beautiful river canyon. Oh, look at those awesome cliff formations in the background. It's just a beautiful part of Arizona. Oh, my friend's walking back towards me. It looks like whatever he went down there to find didn't pan out. Okay, so my friend said there's a bunch of different little warm seeps farther up the creek here. Any place where you see this mineral kind of looking deposit, that's where a seep is coming out. So let's, let's see. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's not quite as cold. It's not really warm over here. Oh yeah, it's lukewarm here. But yeah, the area just below this little tub is really the only place where we found super hot water coming out. And yeah, you probably could dig yourself a nice little pool there. But like I said, I'm not quite sure I feel like going through all that again, especially because I'm not 100% sure what's going on here property-wise. Uh, I sure would hate to go through all the effort of digging a pool and just getting ready to settle in for a nice soak have somebody come at me with a shotgun and go get off my land okay well neither one of us wants to go through all the trouble of digging a pool only to be chased off so we're just gonna go ahead and hike back up to our cars there was one other point along the river that there was uh, public access oh wow look at this so just kind of scrambling back up towards where our cars are I don't I think this is the way I came down I just didn't notice there's a freaking car buried in the dirt here Looks like somebody took a tumble off the road and their car got washed away. God, you can't even tell what it is. Oh, you can see the steering wheel, look. <laughs> what does it say? Oldsmobile, oh my gosh, it was an Oldsmobile. Holy cow. It's just totally overgrown with weeds and stuff. Anyway, uh, what I was saying was we're gonna go back over to the river and see if there's any hot springs over there. And if not, well, then we'll just call her a wrap and give up this was the last hot spring we had pinned on this trip and well unfortunately it's shaping up to be another bust one last look at the old hot spring ranch it sure is a shame that those hot spring tubs got washed away i mean it sounded like they had commercial tubs of their own that got washed away by this flood and well looking at the train you can see how i'm sure they get these gnarly flash floods in the summertime so yeah, that explains why that car was down there and that explains why and how their tubs got washed away. But golly, you think they could have figured out a way to, you know, rebuild them and shore them up better. Okay, we found a way to drive right down next to the riverbank, uh, just a little bit farther back up the road. Uh, kind of came through this little grove of cottonwood trees. Just beautiful. It looks like it's a popular place to camp, I guess. Looks like there's a lot of old campfire rings. But unfortunately, there was a sign coming in that said something about the river had been tested and found to have really high E. coli levels due to human waste. And when it comes to E. coli, I gotta say, I believe it because there's this gross, dirty diaper on the beach. There's beer cans. There's, well, there's all kinds of stuff littered down here. It's, it's a shame because it's such a beautiful area. So we just kind of parked there and I took a walk down here to the river, which even if it does have a hot seep, I'm not sure I would want to soak it in after reading that sign and seeing all the garbage on this beach. Man, it's a real shame. I guess the people from town come down here in the summertime and, well, trash it up. Ugh, gross. Ugh, I don't even want to put my hand in this water. I have hand sanitizer in the car. Eh, it's cold. And I don't see any of those uh, mineral buildups like my friend was saying, indicate hot seeps. And what's more, it doesn't look like anyone has built up any pools anywhere along the bank here in the past. So, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to call this edition of Hot Spring Hunters a bust. A double bust, matter of fact. The first place didn't pan out because private property. This place didn't pan out because, well, a combination of private property and E. coli. But it is a beautiful location to hang out and take a little break, so that's just what I'm gonna do. Uh, it's almost lunchtime. I'll cheat and have my lunch a little bit early. Uh, and uh, plan out what I'm gonna do in Clifton. That's right. I'm gonna go into Old Town Clifton next, which supposedly 
my friend was saying it's an old west mining town from back in the day that well it was said to be even wilder than tombstone 